All right, homies, let's talk about attractor points. Let's talk about an attractor point script, but with multiple points, not just one, not just one attractor, but how do multiple attractors work together in one attractor points definition, right? That's the ultimate question. Okay. It's not really the ultimate question, but it's a good question to be asking, right? And uh, you're going to see why that is maybe a little bit more of a complex question than you might have assumed. But first, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have to first go over how uh, an attractor point works with one point, and then we can understand how an attractor point works with multiple points. And now the key, I'll give you a hint, a little uh, sneak peek. The, the hint is the flip matrix component. Uh, you know, if we don't know what the flip matrix component, you're going to find out in this video. Um, because we basically need to do, we need to, anyways, we'll get, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, just, just chill out. Okay. Hang on. So let's talk, let's take a look at the exact same script, but with one attractor point. Okay. So I have this internalized point. Now, remember when you, when you set up in your internalized data, you can move this point around and it updates live rather than referencing uh, points in Rhino. And the way that you do that is to set points and then use the type and use a coordinate. And that's how you set up an internalized point. Or you can use an existing point and you can go internalize data. Okay. So we have this internalized data point. And so we, we're starting off with this rectangle with a dimension that's 100 by 100. And then we're using the populate 2D component to populate these populate this rectangle with a bunch of randomly assorted points okay and we have our attractor point right here and then I think many of you know that to set up an attractor point definition it's fairly straightforward we're just going to measure the distance between the attractor point and the rest of the points right so and then and then from here there's a there's a bunch of different ways that you are going to set up the uh, to set up the rest of the definition. And so what I'm going to say is this is not the only way to make an attractor point definition, but this is like a very simple way to do it. And that is to essentially take that distance, the distance from your attractor point. It's taking the distance from the, the attractor point to every single other point. Okay. We're going to find the bounds, uh, which is going to give us a domain. Okay. We're going to find the bounds. And then we're going to remap uh, these distance numbers, right? These distance numbers into the the numbers that we're going to use for the size of these circles. So we're remapping, right? So if this number is a certain number, if this is 170 millimeters, well, the, the longest number is, is 105 uh, millimeters. From this attractor point to the furthest point is 105 millimeters. We're going to remap that point to be... 5.9 millimeters because our target domain is zero to 5.9. Our source domain is from, you know, the smallest, the smallest distance to the largest distance. And our, and our target domain, like I said, is zero to 5.9. So we're remapping these distances to this, this, uh, constructed domain. And then we're using those numbers to generate the radius of our circles, right? So our attractor point, is used to determine which points are closest and which points are furthest from our uh, populate 2D points. And our construct domain is used to determine the size of the closest and furthest points from their from the attractor point, right? And we can make the points nearest to the attractor point bigger, or we can make those points smaller. It's up to you, depending on the needs of your attractor point definition. And so that's how it works in a single point attractor script. But what's going to happen if we have more than one point, right? Because we're measuring the distance from the attractor point to all the other points. But what if we have more than one attractor point? Because then which point, which distance do we reference, right? Because there's, there's two points, there's two, two or two or more attractor points. So which, uh, which, uh, distance are we going to use to reference? That's where it gets a little bit more tricky, but we can figure it out. 
So we so this is the uh, uh, this is essentially the exact same attractor script except we have three points. We have a bit more of a complex process going on here. So everything here is the same. Populate two D. You got a rectangle. We have our three points. We've merged them and we put them into the distance component. Now this is really important here. Look at this. We've merged them and then we've grafted that data, simplified and grafted that data. So this is really important because what we're doing here is we want to create three separate lists between the attractor points and the rest of these data points, right? So we want three separate lists. So we're grafting this data so that when we put it into the distance component, right? When we put that, uh, when we put these these 2D populate 2D points to the distance component as one one list, and we put these three points into here as three grafted uh, three grafted sets of data, three lists. Now we have three lists of distances, right? So we have three lists, each one with a thousand uh, a thousand uh, items in the list because there's a thousand points, right? A thousand points. So we have three branches, three lists with uh, a thousand numbers for each, uh, a thousand items in each list. We're not using, we're not going to use all of those data points, but what we care about, this is the most important part. The only thing we care about is which attractor points is the closest attractor point to each one of these points. So let's pick a random point. What this point, Um, this is our tractor point. What about this point right here? Which point, or this point, which point is the closest attractor point? It's this one, right? And what about this point? Well, the closest attractor point is this point. So how do we figure that out parametrically with the algorithm? This is how we're going to do it. We've, we have our distances here. We have our three uh, lists, right? We said we have three branches, each one with a thousand items. So we have three lists each one is defining the distance from the attractor point to each point. That's one list. And then and then the next list is another attractor point to each point. And the next list is the other attractor point, the distance from that attractor point to each other point. So we have our three lists. We're going to take that and we're going to use flip matrix. What the heck is flip matrix? Well, flip matrix, let's look at the difference between the original list and the flip matrix list. Okay. Flip matrix is going to flip the uh, matrix. Sorry, <laughs> it's going to flip the matrix of the data structure, right? Um, and and what that really means is that instead of three branches with a thousand items in the list, now we actually have a thousand branches with three items in each list. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Instead of three branches with a thousand items, we now have a thousand branches with three items. So instead of this list with a thousand items, and then there's three of them, what we've done instead is that we have taken the uh, index zero of the first list, and then we've, uh, and then the flip matrix. In the flip matrix list, we've we've taken index zero of the first list index zero of the second list and index zero of the third list. And we've created a list out of those. So each, each list item is actually converted into, uh, uh, is actually sent to the branch. So this, this, so list item zero goes into branch number zero list item. One of each list goes into branch number one. So like this one, list number eight, you're going to find that list you're going to find this item in the in in branch 8 and because it's branch 1 originally now it's going to be list item 1 okay and so that's how flip matrix works you can imagine flip matrix looks like looks like this if you can if you think about um if you think about branches and list items as columns and rows, then what you're doing with flip matrix. So if, if you're, if you, if you want to think about a matrix as like a number of points, if each point on here is a point in the matrix, then 
if each vertical line is a branch number and each horizontal line is a list number, with flip matrix, this is what we're doing. Instead of three, br three branches and 10 list items, we're going like this, boom. And now we have 10 branches and three list items. So that's basically what flip matrix is doing. And that's why they have this little diagram here. That's what's going on with that, with that little icon. Hope that, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. And so with that, with that process, what we can do is, this is getting a little busy. After we've done the flip matrix, we have uh, basically uh, taken every single da data point and we have the distance, say from thi see, say this data point right here, okay? We have the distance from this data point to this to the attractor point. We have the distance from that same data point to the to the other attractor point, and the distance from that data point to another attractor point. So these lists are actually uh, associated with one single data point, but it's the distance to each attractor point, okay? And we can sort that. And so once we've sorted each one of these lists, now we actually know, uh, now we actually know the the distance the distance to the closest attractor point because we've sorted it. We've taken the original list uh, of of the distance from each attractor point. We've sorted it so it goes from smallest to largest. So now at the top of the list we have the clo the distance to the closest attractor point. And then we're going to use this the list item component to only to take out only the the first item from each list, and then we flatten that list, right? I'm going to disable this. If it wasn't flattened, what it would look like is like this, right? We have our sort list. We're take we're sorting it from smallest to largest, okay? And then we want only the first. Uh, we only want index zero. So we're taking list item zero from each list and then we're flattening it. So we just have a list that tells us the distance from each data point to only the closest attractor point. That's the key thing here. Each data point to only the closest attractor point. Okay. And then, uh, and then we can use that data information the same way that we used in the last example. We're taking those numbers, we're putting it into the bounds component to determine the domain, the source domain, remapping those numbers depending on our construct domain component with our target domain. And then we're generate and that's how we're generating the radius of the circles in this attractor script. So that's how we could go about that's one way that we could go about generating an attractor point script with multiple attractor points. Okay? We're just trying to we're just using a bit of a extra process to determine the the uh, the attractor point, the distance to the closest attractor point, not just any attractor point, but the distance to the closest attractor point. Okay, and we can uh, see a similar process happening. Well, we can do something similar with this script, but this this actually already does some of those processes automatically. And what this is, and you might have seen a recent video that I did with a little like little animation that I made just for fun. And this is a uh, this is like fundamentally how it works it's a little bit more complex it's actually this is it here it's a little bit a little bit busy um but we're using a, a line we're using a line instead of uh multiple points but in a way a line is multiple points a line is like basically an, an infinite number of points right so before we first we had one point then in the next example we had three points and now a line is basically an infinite number of points. So how does that work? Well, it's actually very simple because this component does all the work for us. This component is curve closest point. So we put in our data points, our populate 2D points in our curve, and it determines the distance between, uh, it determines the closest distance, okay? The closest distance between each data point in the curve. Right, that sounds familiar, right? Because this this algorithm here basically just determined the closest distance between the data point and the attractor point, right? And uh, and then we're doing all the same stuff that we did in the last two examples: bounds, remap numbers, construct domain. You, get, I think you get what's going on here. So so essentially, this uh, this this whole component did 
uh, you know, essentially this whole process here, right? So, so when you're using a curve, uh, that's one way to do it. And uh, so generating, generating an attractor point script with a curve is actually uh, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, and it looks really cool. So that is my grasshopper uh, tip of the day, different attractor points strategies, because I know we all love attractor points. They look, they look super cool. Let me just, okay, let me see if this thing's working. This is a fun little script that I was working on. Ding dong, ding dong. Woo! Okay, I need to fix this up a bit and uh, do a bit more of a fun animation out of it, but this is kind of cool. So I actually have like the attractor point line is actually moving and uh, the curves are exploding. And they come back down, but the actual uh, attractor curve is actually bending this whole time. I think it's kind of cool. Gives a very interesting illusion. So I'm gonna keep working on this and try to generate something interesting out of this concept. Okay, I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Keep doing your thing. Peace.